Hi guys, Sheena here. Hope your October is going amazing and uh, things are going well in your lives. Uh, I wanted to talk specifically today about what it feels like and ways and tools and that we can live alongside people without feeling the need to change them, um, to without the feeling the effects and the influence of them, because I think it's an important thing to talk about right now. Uh, it's something that I'm always honoring and working on in myself and something that I definitely for a very long time had a very little to no handle on at all. And, uh, maybe there's some of those people out there in the world that are listening that are like, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, she was uh, judgmental to me or I felt, uh, that, uh, that she was uh, not loving me unconditionally or something like that. And so to those people, I say, I'm, you know, I'm sorry I was learning at the time and I'm, I'm still always learning. I can't promise that I'm going to come out of this perfect anytime soon or ever. So, um, but I do want to talk about this because look at the, the state of the world, right? Like there's so many viewpoints and there always has been, um, but we're moving, you know, countries and, and, and people are, you know, coming here to the U S and, and people are learning to live in, in completely different worlds in the same, you know, new places. And there's so much diversity, more diversity than ever. I would, I would say, um, I don't really have like specific proof to explain that, but I think that's a decent, uh, concept that's kind of of our awareness right now. And I think that, it's so important to be able to not be triggered by other people's opinions, not be triggered by other people's choices and lifestyles. And it's, it's hard. It's so hard. And it, it starts in the individual, in our close relationships, in our family and friends, um, in our everyday interactions, whether it be the grocery store or driving, that's a big one, or our work situations, right? Those are the places we get to really practice that stuff because that's where we sort of have to be uh, in relationship with one another. And, you know, I, I think it's just something that needs to come into our awareness right now. And we need to talk more and more about it because it is difficult to live alongside other people and their choices. And, uh, and, and it doesn't matter how enlightened or how much self work you've done, or if you're a shaman or if you're a Christian or, you know, whoever you are in this world. Um, I think that everyone struggles with that. And I think everybody is challenged with that. And the question is like, what tools help us develop the ability to separate ourselves from others' influence, be able to be understanding to it, not necessarily feel the need that it brings or the need to challenge it or um, refute it. Uh, and, and how do we go about doing that? So uh, I'll tell you some of my own work most recently and, and what I kind of, uh, kind of, where I've found the most compassion, uh, the most empathy and, and the most, uh, recent times of my life. And I, if you listen to me at all, you know, I'm an empath. I, at least that's what I, I call it. Um, I do take on that way to the world. I've always been sensitive. Um, and whether or not you believe that is some sort of superpower, or maybe it's a trauma response or however, uh, you got there, perhaps it's a, it's a mental sort of uh, thing or a hormonal thing, whatever. Cause I actually think there are many things that create that empathy. And I think we all have access to that empathy, but as it stands, I feel the world quite a bit and I feel tapped into the psychic energy of the collective consciousness. And I always have, um, what I do about that. Cause for me, it's not a big, um, it's not a big thing where I feel like I need to intuit certain information. Um, I'm a writer and, and you know, I'm a speaker and I love being in front of this microphone and talking, uh, whatever that means for the world. But, um, I love conversing with people. I love philosophical concepts and, um, and being tapped into the collective conscious has always been really helpful for me because it's given me a level of understanding and, and an ability to put myself in other people's shoes. And I absolutely feel like I can do that. I feel like I could put myself into an understanding 
understanding position. However, where it becomes a burden on me is when I feel the weight of, let's say, another person's issues that are in front of me or my own family's stuff that we have a hard time getting past the unsaid sort of subtle layer of information that we're not talking about, but still exists there. That weight, you know, becomes a burden or has in the past definitely become a burden on me. And I would put up walls to protect myself against that. And um, those walls, you know, those are felt by the other people, whether empathic or not, you know, especially with someone who is, uh, openly loving and understanding and compassionate when I do put up a wall, you know, it, it feels like a wall to that person. Absolutely. And I think I would always look at myself as like, Oh God, I'm such a bad person now because I pushed this person away or I couldn't handle what was going on. And deep down I knew I just couldn't, you know, manage that relationship. And really the only way for me to protect myself was to put up this wall. And I realized the the practice for me was getting more confident in myself. And I was just sharing uh, with somebody recently, uh, the last relationship I had, I was very newly in my, you know, sobriety, we can call it, but really just a big shift in my life. Like I had, I was 32 or 33 at the time. And you know, I honestly, I'd always drank my, my whole life and partied and had fun amidst my self-care and my therapy and all the other things that I did. Um, but it was just a big part of my life. It always was. Um, uh, and I think that when I stopped that stuff, um, there was a lot of self awareness. I had to really look at myself in a lot of new ways because there were things that I was using, um, like partying and smoking and drinking and being in that scene, it, the, the communion even, just the, the connections I would make in that scene were fulfilling something, a void in me that I hadn't really fully faced. And um, when I was with my partner at the time, I wanted to really point my finger and blame him for a lot of things that were going on in my life when I realized it was all really just me. He, you know, he was like standing in front of the mirror to me. And I think I've done that a lot of times. You know, it's easy to point the finger towards someone else but really what's happening, and in that situation, we were not compatible anymore, you know, or in that moment or in that time span, like in that timeline, you know, we were not compatible anymore. And that happens with our friends and our family members where we're not compatible. But here's the thing, like in that situation, you know, maybe that the healthy thing was to walk away and that's, that's ended up what happening. Um, but in situations where we have to run alongside those people, whether it be our family members or our, our work environment or even driving on the street, when we have to be in, in those spaces with those people, how do we... How do we let people be without pointing the finger at them, right? Because the truth of it is just like the things you're doing and who you are and what you're doing right now doesn't really mesh with the things I'm doing. And what I'm really trying to do is is change you because I like you or because I maybe want you in my life to conform to a, a mirror that works in my world because I'm being triggered by the things that don't make sense to my reality that are going on in your reality. Does that make sense? Do you see the connection there? So this is the connection I'm making, right? Like, and on a large scale, like that's just a small window. That's like the smaller, you know, micro uh, individual role that I'm looking at. But on the larger scale, that's what's happening all the time. Whether it be political views or ideas about war and what we should or shouldn't do, about COVID, about, um, about gosh, everything right now, whether it be the, um, the, uh, talks about abortion or, or the talks about our, our differences in, in our, our different communities. And, where we come from and the rules of our world, you know? And it's like, it's it's so easy to just wanna point it to the other person. But really what's happening, all that's happening is we just don't agree with them, right? But it's not them, it's our reality and their reality. Not meshing, not being compatible, not in union with one another. That causes a static. That static triggers us. And if we are not healthy individuals, if we haven't, worked on our self-care and our self-love and our confidence and our ability to stand in our power and our authenticity, then those triggers, that 
incongruence. It aggravates us. It frustrates us. It irritates us. It triggers things inside of us that then project outwardly negative emotional frequencies that create more negative emotional frequency. Does that make sense? So then you're all of a sudden angry and then you're in an argument or then you don't like that person or you never want to talk to that person again. But that postpones our healing because that's not really what's happening. That's not the truth. The truth is two realities are not in congruence in alignment with one another. That's it's not our job to change others' reality to fit our reality. It's very controlling of us, actually. So that's a lot, I know. And, and it's a lot to ask us all, right? It's a lot to ask us to, like, just accept everybody's realities, right? Because what does that look like? What, what does that look like? And, and then maybe there's some more serious things said, like, what does it look like? And this is just kind of coming up on the spot right now. But what does it look like if... Um, if another person's reality is killing someone and we don't agree with it, right? Well, there are rules. And that is probably why we have these democracies and these sorts of things, because we all had to make an agreement on what is like a standardized set of rules and laws for our society. And that is the stuff I think that makes it a little bit, like that's where all of a sudden now we have to stand on one side and decide if those people agree with this sort of doing or not. Um, and I think that's why our world is created the way it's, it's created. I also think that's why it'll never fully work for everyone because it'll never be everyone's makes one choice about um, things. So in the everyday world, though, amongst our families and our friends, I think we can give up those fights, give up that aggravation, give up those frequencies, those lower end frequencies to a more understanding, compassionate, and then even one day joyful world um, by simply recognizing that if I'm in a healthier space, I will not get triggered as much by other people's incongruency with mine because I will see that the world is diverse and I will see that the world actually does have a lot of stuff going on. And if I open my eyes to how perhaps, and this is gonna be a little bit bigger concept, there really isn't any negatives and that like death even is just simply a part of life, um, perhaps I can get out of this sort of fearful state of mind where I'm trying to prevent things that I can't actually prevent. And I think that's, you know, a little bit more bigger, um, bigger spectrum and, and I'll narrow, I'll bring it back down a little bit, but, um, but, but it's what's really going on in the end. And it's, it's, the healing. So I, I'll go back to the tools, right? What has helped me is that if someone doesn't agree with me now, if someone lives a different lifestyle than me, I simply know deep down in my heart that that person's just not really like, I, I, if I want them in my life, I have to let them be. If they show a want to change or I influence them in some way, then you know, the ball's in their court to make the changes and do the things they want. It's not my job still to ask them to show up or do something differently for me. Yes, I know that's high and it seems a bit righteous and, and perhaps a little, you know, maybe even too high of a value to go around just thinking, okay, well, this is, you know, the way uh, it's going to go. But um, ultimately, you know, I, I think that's that's the best way to handle it because if we are in the inside, getting irritated, getting frustrated, going through these sort of lower end emotional bouts, um, whether it be depression or anxiety or fear, we are then putting that back into the world and we're, re, we're, we're reprogramming our world to be on that lower frequency. So to get out of that frequency, we've got to shift the way we're looking at things and from a more joyful and compassionate way comes a more joyful and compassionate world. And then that starts in our own worlds, our own realities, each little bubble of reality. And then, yeah, there's some more spiritual, maybe higher values there that, that you have to sort of grab onto, you know, faith, right? Like if you're really struggling with a person in your life and, and you thought that person was supposed to be in your life, um, you know, not pushing them and tugging at them and trying to shift them and just 
being patient and allowing the powers that be to go at work and bring them to you at the point at which they're ready. Yeah, that, that, that's the higher order. And, and that isn't easy and it is, it is weird and it, and it requires a lot of strong character traits from each individual, but think about it. Just, just do a, that visual sort of experiment with this stuff and think about what that world looks like. And think about the world that we're living now with the fighting and the arguing and the frustrated and the, and the depressions and the anxieties and the fears and the thinking we're controlling things that we're not really and look at what that world looks like. That's all I'm saying here. That's all I'm saying. It's just, they're just conceptual frameworks, mindsets to open us or to maybe to close us. I don't know. But, but to get us to these better understandings, because I'll tell you in my experience now, I'm more confident of person. So I, I have a lot less arguments. I don't mind hearing something that doesn't make sense to me. I don't mind hearing something that I disagree with. I don't mind letting it live while I'm standing there next to it. It doesn't frustrate me as now, once there's something to be said about picking your battles, and I, I do think in certain circumstances, right, you have to stand up for what is um, what is right, perhaps, um, and that obviously is a, a shifting sort of state of consciousness. What is right, but um, in your own realities, you know, there's boundaries, and and there's sticking up for people, and there's sticking up for concepts, and there's making change. But there's always like a graceful way to do that. And that's kind of that next step then is to gracefully approach these concepts um, to implement change. But there's a way to go about doing that from a place of compassion and love. And that is going to, because it's a higher frequency, move things along a lot faster, but we're really used to this other way. That's, that's all. So anyways, uh, I talked a lot, so I'll go ahead and uh, stop talking now. But I hope your, uh, the rest of your October is great. Hopefully, I'll make another video before um, October is over. But as it stands, I'm, I'm, uh, any video <laughs> right now is nice. Um, I, I'm, you know, it is what it is, right? So I hope you're having a great day, and uh, some of this stuff could make sense to you. But thank you very much.